Welcome. In this episode 14 of the beginners tutorial series, we will be looking into data assets. So let's jump into it immediately. So here we are inside of Unreal. Uh, we're using version 4.26 if you want to follow along today. And today we're going to be talking about data assets. Data assets are similar and slightly different to what we spoke about earlier in the episode about data tables. They are a way for you to contain some kind of read information uh, that needs to be done before the game starts. It's not like a database that you read and write to, so it's like information that's available. And you can use this information to populate uh, other objects, for example. Let us start by demonstrating how you create one. So we have a map here that we're in, and we want to create a new blueprint class. If you type data asset, you'll get some results here, and what you want to pick is a primary data asset. Click select, and then we can call this uh, primary data asset, BT, PDA, uh, underscore base, like so. So this PDA base that we made here, our primary, primary data assets, it will work sort of as our parent class for other data assets to create. So in the data table tutorial we made, you remember that we had one row would represent uh, a specific items information, for example. So if you had weapons, you could have one row for a short sword, another row for a long sword, and a third row for an axe or something like that. When it comes to data assets, each row would be represented by a specific object. So if we were to go into, actually let's create a data asset immediately. So we go to uh, miscellaneous, we right click, go miscellaneous, and you see we have something called data assets here. And then it wants to choose which kind of data class it's supposed to be inheriting from. And we choose the PDA base that we created, which is our parent sort of. Uh, we'll call this uh, DA for data asset underscore, and let's say this is going to be a knife. So opening up this data asset, you see that it's completely blank. There's nothing in here at all. Uh, but if we go into our parent, we can now define how our data assets based upon this primary data asset, how they will look. So we could, for example, add some variables like uh, the name of the item and we can uh, pick text for example we can add another variable which would be the damage and create float and another variable that would say uh, mesh and then we we'll pick a static mesh for example like so so now that we have defined the properties of one of these data assets, so if we close down the primary data asset and open up the knife now, we can see what kind of values that uh, we can add into this. So in the beginning, we might want to have defaults for these. Maybe something saying this is a base uh, primary data asset base so that we know that whenever something has this name we know that this is uh, we need to change the name of whatever data asset we're using because it's getting the, the default one from the parent the damage can be set to zero so we know that it's wrong and mesh could be something like a let's take the cube and then for a short sword no our knife we go in here and we say that okay this one should be called a knife it should have one damage, it should be a cone, like so. And let's create one more data asset just so we have another one to play around with. And we'll call this, we'll base it on the same, uh, DA, and we'll call this an axe. We open up that one, we say that the name is an axe. And we say it has 5 damage, 
and as a visual representation just so we can see that they're different of course that's the only purpose we're picking these measures in in real life in real life if you were doing something serious with this then you would of course be having a sword mesh or a knife mesh or a axe mesh for example uh, let's see if we can get the sphere so we have three different distinct uh, objects basically for for these three so there we go so now we've created some data assets so what we could do is uh, if we were to have a class let's say we have a um, based on an actor and we say it's a BP we name it BP underscore and we say call it DA for data asset because we want to relate it to this example and we say weapon so this is what our blueprint looks like and we want our blueprint to be containing a component of type static mesh and rename it weapon mesh and we want it to have some variables like name and we set it to name and let's have it something like damage for example and the float and then we have a third variable which we call data assets and let's see we should be picking this one I believe let's double check see if that works so like so and we want to also expose this variable so that it's editable outside that is actually incorrect we need to use PDA base here I realize so we go back to our weapon we change our data assets to be PDA there we have it base object reference okay so like so uh, so now we can choose our different assets here um, so what we can do is we can <coughs> take our uh, our weapon uh, class and go into construction script which is the script that runs whenever you're moving it around in the world and you can see that if we have a data asset that is valid meaning something is set you branch this with an if then we can say okay then we want to actually have our name set and our damage set and our weapon mesh set set mesh like so if if this one is valid we want to actually set these properties and we want to set them from our data assets like so so we have all of these prepped here now this one is wrong we want to do it like so. No. Set static mesh. My bad. Like so. So now we can input a new mesh in there. So like so. And now we need to get this information from our data asset here. That's that's the last part. So we'll drag out from the data asset and we'll say get and you can see we have our variables here like damage mesh and name so we'll get the, the damage one and we'll input it over here we'll get our name now I made this variable here a name instead of a text doesn't matter much we could just put it here and, and it actually doesn't want to translate that so we'll make sure that we have the same type here by renaming the name to a text here and it should be renaming all the references so now we have the name set from the data set the damage set from the data set and now we want to get the mesh and we want to set it over here like so <coughs> so this means that we could have an object like our weapon over here in the world 
uh, and all it needs is a data asset now to repopulate it. So if we put a knife in here, now it is a knife and you see that it gets the mesh from uh, the knife and it would have all the other properties as well, like the, the name and the damage set from the data asset. And then if you have an axe, you can just replace the data asset and you see it immediately updates with the information from the data asset. So this is one way to uh, have a lot of properties or information set if you want to change them around for example in objects in the world it could be weapons it could be characters it could be things like traps or there's a lot of uh, different ways you could be using this so the, the differences between this and data tables are among other things that instead of having a table which consists of all of your rows like data tables have and having it all collected in one specific area you have one row being represented by one of each of these data asset objects. So that means that data assets would be taking up much more space uh, in form of actual items in your content browser, right? Uh, when it comes to things like if you were collaborating with another person perhaps, then maybe data assets would be more beneficial because if you're both changing on uh, you or maybe changing the properties of an axe then another person could be changing the properties of a knife at the same time rather than if you were both uh, mixing around uh, in the same data table at the same time where it uh, it would be shared between you um, so yeah that's the basic gist of data assets they they can contain pretty much any information that you want and there are also even further much more advanced ways to use data assets as well but I think that uh, we should try and keep this fairly uh, beginner friendly for now hopefully you found this video helpful if you liked the video leave a like if you did not like it leave a dislike leave any suggestions or comments you might have down below subscribe and share the video if you want to see more like it in the future in the next video we will be looking closer into splines and talking about how those work that is all for now keep on learning take care